Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And today we're going to continue our build of the Agoura Models Ladder Truck Number 9 from the New York Fire Department. I'll put a link below to this particular build and Agoura. Uh, so this will be pack 5 and we'll see how many issues or stages we get through today. So I'll bring you forward and we'll get started. Alright, in this first stage 31 we are going to be doing uh this is a cabinet that came with the kit and we're going to be putting this power switch in uh if you have the cabinet situated like this with the the hole up towards the top you want the wires coming out to be on the bottom and they're going to get held in with some h screws All right, the switch is in. There it is inside the cabinet. You can turn that on and off. The next assembly process in stage 31 is going to be putting, we got the door here. This is the left cabinet door and it goes towards the front of the vehicle. And then this little inside panel goes right on top of here. So we'll just put some glue on here to hold it. Now when you assemble this to make sure you have the right in interior panel going to the right door, this little square right here, the magnet right here has to sit in that. And we'll just hold that together for a few seconds. And we put that away. Now they also include the right front cabinet door right here. And it's basically the same thing. Just put some, some glue here and there and put this panel right on. Again, we'll just hold it for a few seconds. Okay, so now we have the two doors that are done. Now we want to bring back the cabinet door that has a fast pack written on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this tiny little door handle right here. It's going to go into this recess right here. Now for that I'll use a toothpick and some glue. Now this door handle is keyed so it can only go in one particular way. There's the door handle in the door. Now we're going to bring back the cabinet we did with the light switch. Light switch. With the power switches in here. Okay, and on the side, right here, there's a recess with three nubs. And the door labeled a fast pack that we just put the door handle on, that's going to fit right on there. So again, we're going to put some glue right along in here. And there's three holes, obviously, in the hinge. And it goes right in. So now that cabinet door is all in. Now, as you may have guessed, we take that other door we did. And that is going to go on the other side. And there we go, both doors are on there. One cabinet done. Now this is for a shelf right here. And they also included this little steel bar, which is where the magnet attaches or it grabs onto. And right in here is where you're gonna put that. They say the magnet will just fit right in that position without any glue right there. And the reason you don't need any glue with that is they also included this shelf cover right here. And that is going to get held in with some glue right in there. Right on these posts. I'll hold that into place. And the shelf is together. Now we got to go back to stage 10 for the next thing you're going to want to open up these cabinet doors right here and right in there is a right in there there's a fire extinguisher is going to go in there which we did earlier in stage 10 there's the fire extinguisher we did in stage 10 or we didn't came in stage 10 but we didn't use it like I said that is going to go right in there now it is a bit of a tight fit 
there, like I said, there's little pins in the back here, but they've been painted. So just like some other stuff, I think paint has misaligned the, or made it a little too thick for the hole. I may have to open it up a little bit. So just like we know, we're going to take our X-Acto knife, just run that around the hole, open it up a little bit. Now at this point, we probably are may have to use some glue to hold it in there, but that's no big deal. So let's get that back in here. And now the fire extinguisher is in there. So what I'm going to do is I want to put a little bit of glue on the back. And that'll just make sure that that fire extinguisher gets held in there. Now, inside the cabinet might be hard for you to see, but there's some ridges right here. And this is where the shelf that we just put together slides into here. There's two holes right here in the shelf. They go towards the top shelf just slides right in here there's a pin on the back right here that goes into the hole right here and it clicks pretty much right into place and stays there so there we go there's the cabinet all done and that brings us to the end of stage 31 we have our little cabinet with power switch and fire extinguisher all done Okay, stage 32 can't get much easier. Basically, all you're doing is taking uh, this side compartment panel right here out of the box, along with some D screws and some H screws. And that's it. We're on to stage 33. All right, for stage 33, looks like we're going to be doing some tire work here. Now, they want, what they want us to do is take one tire, and they want us to put... And the tread, tread is non-directional, and it's the same plain rubber on each side, so it doesn't matter which way, which tire goes where, but they basically want you to put this in one tire, and then this one in the other tire. Now, you have to heat this up in some water. I don't have any water, so what we're going to use is... A device I use for taking off the fronts of tablets and cell phones when I, want to, when I want to repair them or when I want to do surface mount. So it's basically it's basically a hot air gun. So what we're going to do is we're just going to warm these tires up. And when you're using an air gun like this, hot air gun, you want to keep it moving. You don't want to hold it in one place or else it will start to melt the rubber. Okay, it is beginning to warm up. I think we may be able to get that on there. And you just kind of press it right on there. Work it around. There you go. Now what we're going to do is take the other tire and the other part of the rim and we're going to do the same thing. All right, I heated it all up. Now we're going to press the rim right into the tire. Another tire. All done. All right, so this particular wheel has a shaft. There's four pins right here. You want to take the... There's a deep well right here on this one tire. And then there's a shallow well. You want to take the shallow well, line the holes up with the four pins on here. Just give a press and they said to make sure that the four pins project through the corresponding holes which they do I can see the posts in the hole right here so as you can see right there those four pins are in the four holes okay now there's no glue holding these together which I'm assuming there's going to be a screw that goes right through there into the axle that goes on the other side right here so there is no need to really glue these together so, put this aside for right now. And that is it for stage 33. Now we're going to move on to 34. 
All right, 34, you've got an outrigger. You looks like a hubcap here and some J screws and some L screws. And the first thing I want you to do is we're gonna, I'm gonna put these up over here. Because he wants to go and get the chassis. So we've got the chassis. And as you can see, we've done this tire over here before. So this double tire that we just did is going to go right onto here. And it's going to get held in with an L screw. Now don't tighten it down so far that the wheel doesn't turn. So the wheel turns here, so we're doing good. Yeah, before we move on, I forgot. The hubcap does go onto this that was included. So we'll put this in here. The hubcap has two little tabs sticking out here. And you can see where that mates up inside this rim. And you just push that in there and it stays. So it matches the other side. All right, so we're gonna put this frame away. Now this thing in 34, they're gonna have is bringing back that front bumper that already had one outrigger already installed in it. So we're gonna take this outrigger, let's flip this over. It goes right into the hole right here. There's a post that holds it and a hole. And that is going to get held in with a J screw. All right, that's pretty cool. The outrigger's in there. Now the next step in 34 is he wants to bring back the front cab. And as you can see, there's two holes right here. And I think what they want us to do, yep, is we're going to be putting this front bumper with the outriggers we just did right in here. I'm going to carefully turn this upside down. And there's two holes right here. And they get held in with two J screws. Now you may see me struggling with that screw, and that's because I forgot to use a rapid tap. So I'm just going to put some in this container right here. Then I want to take my other J screw. I'm going to dip it in some rapid tap and we're going to screw this right in it already. Look at how easy that screw is going in. So as I've always said before, when you're putting parts in the metal, screws in the metal, you really want to use the rapid tap. Okay. And with that stage 34 is done. Looks pretty cool, huh? Well, let me get into focus for you. That's the front of it. Pretty cool. All right, now let's move on to the next one. All right, in stage 35, we're going to be using what's called the box frame, box frame shell. Okay, and they also give you the box frame reinforcement right here. And then you get some type H, B, and K screws. So holding the frame like this with the two big cutouts over here. You take the reinforcement frame. Now, as I noticed before, this looks bent. My frame won't fit in here unless I straighten that out, bend this out. I did not want to use any pliers, but this die cast metal is pretty hard. Now on this box frame, there's two ends. One has a, a little nibbly bit right at the very end, right there. And the other one's inset a little bit. So you want the inset side to go over to here. Okay, so bending that out did work. It now fits in here. Okay, so that frame is now in there. And there's three holes down here. Down here. So they get held in with some B screws, three of them. And you do that from underneath now that box frame support is plastic so we won't need any rapid tap and 
Now that box frame support is sec securely held into place. So now back in stage 30, they sent us this box frame here. And that is going to go right into here. There are some tabs at each end here to go into mating slots in here. Now, if you have the two open ends of this frame right here, okay, the narrow part of this box frame right here goes up here. And there's holes right in here and here that mat that mate up with the little pegs that are on that support frame that we just screwed in. So you want to make sure they fit in there. I'm looking at the bottom here to make sure the slots, the little tabs came through all the slots and they did. And with that, stage 35 is done. Okay, here's all the parts for 36, uh, compartment liner, uh, compartment front door, uh, door back, left hand rear door back, a left hand rear door front, a couple door handles, and then they gave us some D screws in this kit as well. So just like before when assembling the door, I'm going to move this cabinet out of the way. Here's the magnet. Here's the uh, back of the door with a little square in here where this magnet recess in here so it's going to fit right onto here. So we'll start off by putting some glue onto here. Now we'll just hold this for a couple seconds for the glue to take effect. Now what they want us to do is to bring back this cabinet that they just gave us. And just like before, there's a recess with... Uh, four pins or pegs sticking up here and that's where this cabinet door is going to go so what we're going to do is we're going to place some put some glue down in here then we take the door line up the pins hold it in place for a little while for the glue to take effect and there you go we have a door another cabinet door now just like before they're going to want us to put one of these door handles into here and of course, it is a D-shaped hole, so you can only go one way. I'm going to use a toothpick to put this glue in here. And door handles in. Now we're going to do the assembling the rear door for the main body. So we have this little panel right here, it has a little tiny hinge on it. And much like the cabinet doors, there's a little magnet right here. And if you had, you had the door situated, so you're looking at the back of the door. Here's the front. Here's the back. You want the hinge to your right. You want the magnet matching up right here. And you're just going to flip this over and put this right in. So again, we're going to get some glue out, put it around these pins. Flip this door around. Hold this while it takes effect. Inner panel door is all assembled. They want us to bring back this frame. And on this end that has the two, oops, has the two open ends. Okay, now when you assemble this, there's a gap between I'm trying to figure out how to show this to you. There's a gap between that inner frame and the outer frame. So this door, okay, the hinge is going to go between those two frames. So when you align this, here's the big hole in the outer frame. Here's the, obviously the silver part is the hole in the metal frame. And underneath, there is a hole right there. There you go. Now you can see it go through, through the inner frame. Okay, and that is going to get held in with some type D screws. Now I have to push down a little bit on the, on the whole uh, frame area to make sure these things line up. And I think I have to do that because, as you saw on the previous frame, my frame was a little bent. But they are going in. 
So there you go, the two screws are in. Now, as is normal for me, I missed the step right here. Right here is supposed to be another other door handle that we got, so I'm gonna put that in. Now the door handle's in. So this is what the end of the frame looks like with the door in place. And that's it for this stage. Uh, we do have left over this box right here, which we haven't used yet. All right, here's the parts for 37. It looks like we're gonna continue along with the theme of doing some cabinet doors. So much like before, here's the magnet right here in each door. Uh, actually the inner door or the back panel of the door there's a magnet in each one of these right here is a recess where each one of those magnets go so all it looks like you're going to be doing i'll orient these so it looks like it does in the picture so all you're going to be doing is flipping this door over and putting on it there so we're going to be putting more glue right on these posts hold that for a few seconds I'm going to put this door up here. Now we're going to bring back this door here. And it's basically the same thing. You want the door here. I got the hinge to the right. And there's the little recess where the magnet's going to go. So again, we'll put some glue on these posts. Flip them over. All right, let that glue take hold. I'm going to put these up here the other one now it also had a cabinet that came along in here and what we're going to be doing is putting the doors now if you look at these hinges right here the hinges are shaped a different way and that's because they correspond with the side of the cabinet so you can only put these on here basically one way so the first one we're going to do is the one with a little bit of a cutout right here. And that's this door right here. So it's going to go right on here. And as you can see, the metal follows the, the cutout. So I want to put some glue on here. And then we put the hinge on. And we're just going to hold that hinge there for a little while. Okay. So there we go. And the doors on and guess what we're going to do the same with this side okay the glue took hold so we now have two doors next we're going to be taking the door handle that was included and guess what we're going to be putting it right into there take some glue put it right into here Okay, so the door handle is in. Now, just like that shelf we did in the other stage, we have another one. So we take the metal bar, put it right here in this slot like before, and we are going to put the bottom right on here. So we need to put some glue into these holes right here. Again, we're just going to hold it for a few seconds while glue takes effect. We're going to take, bring this cabinet back, we'll open it up, and as you can see, there are two ridges right in here, okay, with the shelf, with the two holes in the shelf up. You're going to slide this right in, and there we go. The shelf is in. Close up the doors. And that is it for stage 37. And pack four is all done. Pack five is all done. So that was it for pack five of the Agora's ladder truck number nine of the fire department of New York, uh, ladder truck nine. Uh, this has really been a fun, I'm really looking forward to this build every time. It is really cool. Look at some of the stuff we did today. A lot of cabinet work. Did the box frame uh, we did uh, some outrigger work 
So I hope this video helped you on your build if you're doing this. If not, like I said, I'll put the link below to, the, to this model and the Gore models. And uh, be sure to check back often to see what other builds we're doing with this truck. So until next time, I'm Steve. Thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave.